Maybe you know, maybe not, but we are crazy about mushrooms. Now for us, it's a winter, so what we do with the mushrooms, especially porcinis and chanterelles, we dry them. So those are dried porcinis, aromatic as hell. What we do with them, we actually dry them and then we have a water, we, we put the water back to them. And let them soak the water up for a while. Always just the cold water. Always a cold water and a bit of bit of salt. Do that. So let it stay. <clears throat> what we're gonna do? It's super easy. The ingredients are: this is the vegetable stock. You need oil, a couple of bay leaves, black pepper, porcini's, sweet cream or double cream, some salt, garlic, thyme, butter. And I use whatever, just neutral mushrooms, because those porcinis are so, so, so powerful. We use, you can use shiitake, you can use gnocchi, you can use champignon, whatever mushrooms, just light, simple, tropical mushrooms, we call them. And of course, potato and some onions. So easy, easy, super classical soup. Let's go. First things first, onions, clean some onions. And you have to dice them super small because it's actually be a soup. We're gonna blend it. It's gonna be super creamy. So we need all the sweetness from the onions to go out and have really good time together with the wait garlic. So the garlic just bench the garlic, take it out. We don't use all the garlic, we use just like three cloves. Here in Nordics, the garlic is super, super intensive. So if you use uh, like tropical garlics, which don't have winters, so they don't have the cold, so they are not so intensive. So you can use like four or five of them, four or five cloves, or you can use just a couple of the Nordic ones. So those things we actually collect. We collect it for the Easter and we color the eggs in them. So champignon, we will cut it afterwards. Now we do the, do the onion. Just clean it, nice and beautiful. And dice it really, really thin. And after that, we will just start to saute them. That means in a really low temperature, a bit of oil, saute for the long time until they become nice, golden, crunchy. Yep, this is done. So I have like small onions, five of them. If you have bigger one, use one big one. Two big ones, and the technique is like this, we just chop it really, really thin. There's a loads of tricks how you can skip the crying while you're cutting the onion. Oh, but the, none of them work with, for me. The only thing worked for me it's do nothing. Fortunately, I like to cut the onion, so I really like to cry. Guys, sorry. Some of the cooking needs some crying. So the onions are done. I'm stepping to the garlic. So the same thinness of garlic. And now please, just turn back because I will just, you know, go and cry one turn. So I collect all the stuff for the Easter egg coloring. You can 
just dry them and collect them. And double check the onions and the garlic, mix them together so they are nice, small, and equal in a size. So the crying is done, the onions are done. Good. Let's put some electricity on. So, temperature, couple tablespoons of olive oil. Nice oil. Wait a bit until it becomes hot. Always when you start to cook the onions and garlic, remember, you need this noise, yeah? This is a mic. Always starts with that. The soup always starts with that. Nice, beautiful noise. Or music. But the oil goes everywhere. And we need the water to go out from the onion and garlic. So use one small pinch of salt into that. And we can put already the black pepper inside, a couple of bay leaves, so they cook and they become more intensive, because when they are cooked in oil, they are more intensive. Nice, beautiful, shiny thing. It's already, you can see, it's already cooking. Now I put it on a low heat. On a low, low heat, while it's cooking, I will do the rest of my job. I take the mushrooms, the champignons, cut them. I have 400 grams of mushrooms, which means like six, seven mushrooms. really nice soup because you can actually heat up yourself in the winter time and it's not heavy so it don't contains any meat so it's a light but still we believe that mushrooms are protein so the mushrooms especially porcinis it's a lot of them in the winter time you see it's cooking but the water is still not out, so I will cut the mushrooms smaller. So I will add a little by little to the onion, mix it together and wait until the water goes out. Mix it and cook it for five minutes approximately. Just mix, wait. It's boring, but you get rhythm of the water. So I'm still mixing. Uh, you can see the mushrooms are getting more moisture and moisture. And the water is not out. So, meanwhile, I will... Uh, some potatoes. It's really important because we need some starchiness in that. So 
So and it will keep actually all the soup together. Don't use a lot of them, but uh, use quality ones. You need starchy ones. So some four potatoes will be enough and I will cut it in a small, small cubes. So all the starch will go out more quicker. And it actually will go out because if you cut it in a big lamps, it will just not go out and you will get not so nice and beautiful texture in the soup. While it's cooking, there is a time. We'll put the time in. And the mushrooms become more aromatic. You see, I use the thyme with the small thing. So it's like a bouquet, like a flowers. I can easily take it out afterwards. And already the mushrooms become more forest flavor. Potatoes will be done, small cubes. Bit of salt afterwards. So the potatoes, as I mentioned before, I will cut it in a small, small cubes and actually don't boil it, I will saute them a bit and just then add the stock. Cut them in a small, small cubes, lower the temperature, because after the next technique is to saute the potatoes into that mushrooms and get the starch into that. It takes a while. You probably know, because we are really crazy about uh, potatoes. So, we use potato in every hot dish, whether it's soup or it's a stew or it's just whatever main course. The potato is the number one vegetable here in Nordics. I know you guys eat a lot of rice, we eat a lot of potato. So potatoes, small cubes inside and saute it together for a while. Here is my stock, remember about that. This will be my juice. Oops. Saute for a while. It's approximately like two, three minutes. Let those potatoes just open. They should open and the leftovers and all the aromas from the mushrooms should go in. So basically they have to start to live together because the mushrooms was hot and the potatoes were cold. So they have to just absorb each other. And you can see already the starchiness, what we need, especially in the bottom of the pot. So it's nice creamy already this is actually one of the peelings for the pies you can make we are really famous about the small pies in every country in every culture there is a pie maker so this is one of the feelings the classic feelings that we have for the pies the mushrooms the potatoes remember the porcinis just pour the water on they were crunchy now they are nice and meaty what we do, we put them in and now the aroma will become more powerful than ever. This juice of the pochinis, we pour it in as well. And the uh, salt, the leftovers from the salt, the last ones, inside, temperature up as high because we already start to put the waters in. So the base was stewing, sauteing in the oils and getting rid of the uh, cheap uh, champignon tropical mushroom waters. Now we are starching them with the starches of the porcinis as well. They are now nice, beautiful, already like a stew. And I start to add a bit of stock inside. You can use chicken stock, you can use vegetable stock. 
just don't use fish stock, I guess. Whatever stocks you need. No soy sauce in that, no fish sauce, just plain flavors. And the porcinis are the, the main character in this plate. You see it's stewing, you see it's starchy in the bottom. Starchiness from all the vegetables and all the mushrooms goes out. And I just add a bit of stock. And this stock goes in. I just play with that until I become like a soup consistency. Nice. I guess uh, the time already did the job. So I take out uh, the time. This is done. And I pour all the, all the stock inside. Bit of cream. Sweet cream. Creaminess and sweetness. Let it boil, let it simmer on a slow heat now. So guys, remember what we did. Chop up the onion, chop up the garlic. I cried, remember that? <clears throat> then we saute them in, a, in a oil a bit. Then we add the bay leaf, we add the thyme, we saute it. We add the bit of salt, bit of pepper, saute, 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 boring, boring, boring. Then you chop a lot of champignons, put them in. Remember, getting rid of the waters. Then I chop the small cubes, the, the potato, then I add porcinis, then I add the stock, then I add the sweet cream. And the last thing, what we're gonna do, we just blend it and we add butter when we blend it. So it's gonna be heavy, really rich, super winter soup. Take the blender. This actually has one horsepower, so it's a super blender. Maybe you don't have one, so no worries, you can use hand blender as well. No worries about that. Just about the consistency. It will be super smooth for me. So, like we do, so small. Well, I have to put something on. One horsepower. This is fun. This is good about the kitchens. You always act like a MacGyver. You want to do something different. Somehow you want to skip the correct lines. In the kitchen you can afford it. You can't afford it in different disciplines. But here, in science, it's impossible to do that. In the kitchen you always can. The one thing is, there is always mess. So somebody has to clean it. You see it's already the consistence of the soup, yeah? As a cream. So I have the butter here. And I will just add butter to the soup. So it didn't cook, and it mixes in together. So this is how you make the perfect, amazing cream soups. Just in a finish, you add the cold butter to the cream. I think it's done. Switch it off. Let's see. Perfect cream soup. Porcini soup. Nice for the winter. Potatoes, porcinis, loads of onion, loads of crying, loads of chopping, loads of blending, loads of mess. But in a finish, it's an amazing classical porcini soup as it should be. The next thing what we're gonna do is actually pasta. So this is fresh pasta. It's super crazy recipe. I cook it loads of times, but it's kind of, it can sound crazy. So what you need, you need the Latvian gold, we call it. So it's a sprotz. That means actually herring, 
The herring lives in the different seas, but here in Baltic Sea, it's actually super small. And because the sea is not really salty and it's not deep, the herring is small and it's not oily by the taste. So what we do with that, we actually smoke it and then we put it in oil and jar it. So this is the product that we have and it's super tasty and super nice if you cook it correct. So I need a leek, I need some pickled cucumbers, some lemon, and of course, number one herb here in Latvia is dill, some salt, some pasta, and I use some Sichuan pepper, but you can use black pepper if you want, some oil. So the first things first, uh, we need leek, just a white of the leek. Uh, what I can do, what I will do, I will just put it in a small, See? Nice, easy. Uh, heat up the saucepan. A bit of oil in it. Wait until it becomes hot. Put the leek in. And saute it for a while. Always keep eye on it. Keep mixing. No burning, just slow temperature. Let it, let it stew for a while. Nice fresh aroma of the leek, but after a few seconds, it will become nice cooked leek aroma. Then what I will do, I will cut up the things and those sprouts that we have here, uh, will take them out because they are in oil and this oil is not the premium taste. I will just take them out, put them in a napkin and soak them. Not just soak them, just get rid of the oils. Yep, let they rest for a while. Oh, let's see, the leek is already done. It's nice, already cooked, but still young, fresh flavor. Uh, I just wait until it gets a bit thicker. Have a cream. See, it's become creamy. I have uh, some lemon. So we'll zest some lemon. Let it cook. Slow temperature, more cream. Pepper. I use citron pepper. You can use black pepper. You can use whatever pepper you want. I just prefer, in this particular recipe, citron pepper because it's more lemony. Quite a lot. Bit temperature up, so let's see, becomes more creamy, more cream. And cut the lemon on the half. Uh, pickled cucumbers. I need just four of them approximately. Four small ones, so a you know, couple of big ones. See the the sauce of the pasta. It's already done. So it's a leek, cream, citron pepper, lemon zest, bit of lemon juice. It's done. Now we have to cook the pasta. So it's a two-step recipe actually. One is the sauce. Cook it. Let it rest. You will reheat it. And the other one is pasta. Always with the pasta, remember, boiled water, hot as hell, and salt. Let it go up. 
pasta, fresh pasta goes in. This one will take three minutes because it's fresh. You can use dry pasta or you can use noodles. You can use rice noodles, you can use egg noodles. Just always remember, salt first. Yep, we have a few minutes now. Let it cook. Enjoy your pot and beer if you have one. The pasta is boiled. Take pasta and we have this nice pasta water. Keep it, save it. Maybe we need it. Pasta is done. Pasta sauce, top, maximum heat. Let's taste it. Let's taste it. Yeah, more salt. More lemon juice. See, it becomes bubbly. Creamy pasta straight in a sauce. Mix it together. Should absorb it. Nice creamy leek and citron pepper. In the last second, you add the pickled cucumbers in. Just for the last second, just before serving. And you serve. Sir, we you have your beautiful Baltic herring. That the sauce will just perfectly complement it. And of course, number one herb, the dill. Dill here is everywhere. Nice, creamy, amazing. So, what we did. We cut up the leek, we use just the white stuff of the leek. Cut it in a string, saute it a bit in oil, then we add, uh, what we had, citron pepper, we had a bit of cream, we had the lemon zest, we had the lemon, juice, bit of salt, make a nice creamy sauce, cook the pasta, mix it together, add the cu pickled cucumbers, add the sprouts, add a bit of dill, a bit of lemon juice on the top, a bit of salt on the top, bit of citron pepper on the top. Amazing. Enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna do a simple, really, really simple recipe. We call it BSPN mild, which means actually like a cottage cheese or curd cake. It's super easy. It's really made in every day's house. You can buy it in every supermarket, small store. It's a small bite. It's like a street food, but it's always really nice when you eat it really straight from the oven. So what we need, it's actually, as every cake, needs sugar, flour, butter, and egg. It's for the pastry, for the bottom size of this. And then for the topping, we need, of course, a lot of curd. If you don't have it, it's a specialty actually from the Eastern Europe. Uh, you can use Italian ricotta, but when you buy the ricotta, you have to put it in a sieve, so all the juice from that goes out and you just pour it away. You use just uh, all the sticky stuff. Then you need raisins. Raisins is the first step. What you do, you just pour water on them so that they come really juicy, nice, and you can bake with them. Just mix a bit. Couple of eggs for the topping, a bit of sea salt, a bit of flour, and uh, sugar. So the first step is, butter is frozen, so you can really hit it straight from the freezer. So you take uh, sugar and flour, mix it together, 
and you mix it like that. So they are 50-50 mixed together. And then you have a grater and you grate the butter into that. So the butter really looks like a, like a curly girl's hair. Yeah? Nice frozen and your pan becomes quite oily. So please do it quickly and don't do it like this. Do it like in a big, long, really long Kelly hair. Yep. Why? We'll show you why. Because now what we have, we have all the powdered stuff on the bottom and all the oily stuff on the top. You have two hands. What you do, you really like a make like a panade. So you mix them together. Mix it and please let the butter don't melt. Yeah. Uh, it will melt then afterwards in an oven when it will be a bottom of the cake. Basically mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. After one, two minutes of doing this, you will see that it becomes like a sand, like a sea sand. And the oiliness of the butter will influence the, the flour and sugar. And your hands will become a bit, bit oily. But still, you keep mixing for five minutes. Not the mixing, but like the technique is to just panade it, make it together. If you put it in a mixer, it will become lumpy and your butter will be everywhere. So this is why you always do it with the hands. So it takes like five minutes and you will see it. Then it becomes like a, like a bigger lumps a bit. And the smaller ones. Keep in your head, then you have a, one egg left, yeah? So this egg will go afterwards inside. And the egg will be the Compliment which makes everything together go. Together go. It's a nice expression. Yep, becomes more oily, more stiff, but still keep doing that. Keep doing that. If you leave it for five minutes over there, it will become just an oily there paste. So this is why you need to do all the time that. And the butter always should be frozen. Never in the room temperature or fridge temperature, always from the freezer. So they, just then it will become nice, perfect scent pastry. Yep. So after five minutes of doing the thing, you will see the result. See the the pastry now looks like a sand. It's really similar as the texture as the cottage cheese. So this is the result what you need. Let it rest for a couple of minutes. You have one egg. Take the egg, beat it up, beat it. You beat it up. A bit of, a bit of water into that. So it beats more quickly. And you put it into the pastry. And keep doing. Keep doing until the pastry becomes stiff and you know one lamb. Now you can feel it's like a now it looks like ricotta, like Italian cheese. But you still what you need. You need those lamps. You need those, like a, like a cottage cheese texture. It's really buttery, really nice. If you smell it, it smells like a, like a French butter cookies. Now it's done. Looks like that. 
and you put it straight in a freezer. You can clean film it, put it in a freezer for half an hour, 15 minutes, or you can put like 45 minutes, one hour in a fridge. So let it just rest and becomes like in a one consistency. So the next step, while the pastry is in the fridge, uh, we do the topping. So the topping is the cottage cheese. We take the cottage cheese. And you make smooth, airy consistency. You can use blender, you can use mixing machine, or you can use old school technique, which is just putting through the sieve. This old school technique makes it more airy, and still the consistency is of cottage cheese. You see those things going on? Oh, it's a nice texture, perfect, and all the old ladies for hundreds of years were doing this. They didn't have the blenders, so we do the same. It's more easy, so especially if you do it like small cake, not the big one. lumpy consistency. This is what we need. Takes a bit of physical job. Don't use any plastic. See, I use the wooden spoon. Always use wood because metal and metal, it's, it can be suspicious and plastic as well. You just grate the plastic in your food. So metal and wood. This cake particularly, it's super old school recipe and it tastes amazing. Uh, if you use the raisins, you can see them here. Uh, and you have some cognac at home. The cognac is made from the grapes or some chacha or grappa. You can use the whatever distillated grapes, pour them in and make it a bit of alcoholic cake if you want. See, nice. Scrape it up. Takes a couple of minutes. Takes a bit of effort. Takes a bit of job. Maybe a bit too much. You can use the blender instead, but you can see the consistency is just amazing. Just right, just correct. Okay then, while I'm doing this, I have to do a couple of things afterwards. So Salt, inside, sugar, inside, egg, separately, couple of eggs inside, beat them up. Nice, inside. So we have cottage cheese, sugar, couple of eggs, bit of flour, not a lot, and all the juice from the raisins goes into the garbage, and all the raisins inside. If you have a mixing machine, now you can put them all in a mixing machine. But the mixing machine today is uh, me, so I will mix it together. Mix it smoothly, let it go, all the things should be everywhere because it's a topping. Nobody wants the cake without the raisin. So please be careful and mix it all straight together. If you don't put the flour inside, you can actually use it as a dessert without cooking. Or you can cook this particular topping like a pancakes. So you can just take a skillet and put them on. So it's an easy, super easy way to, to use cottage cheese and to eat a bit of Latvia. This is super traditional, super classical food. Let it rest, see? I mix it really well, super nice. Put it in a fridge. Well, the pastry is in a fridge, the topping is in a fridge, so they become equally in an equal temperature, the same, then, after half an hour, 25 minutes, 
We will put them together. Okay, the pastry is now from the fridge, so it's actually really cold. And you can feel that it's already becomes like a family, so it's all together. So what you have over here, a bit of extra flour, just for not to stick together. Rolling pin. And we have a baking tray at home. Whatever shape or size you have, I put the baking paper on the bottom so it didn't stick together. And I have the round form, so I just squeeze it a bit, put it on the top, change it, chicks, 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 bit of extra flour, and roll it. Again, bit of extra flour. Don't feed the pastry with the flour. Use it as just a, as a lubricant. Now I have this one. Now is the trick, how to put it over there. Take a bit of knife, cut it off. Now, now is the trick. See? Now use your fingers and it should be equal everywhere. You don't want the cake like a mountain. So you squeeze it in every small corner where it's possible. Squeeze it down. See? It's equal. Now because we have those small lumps of butter everywhere. Use a simple fork or chopstick and you do the... You make the small holes for the air when it bakes. Let it goes up. And let the air goes out and the cake don't go up. That's everywhere, everywhere. And you put it in the oven. In the oven, it will stay 180 degrees Celsius for about eight till 15 minutes, 12 minutes, ideal. And you will see from the window of the oven, it will become uh, crunchy and really, really aromatic. You can use it as a cookie, actually, and uh, don't use any topping, or you can use the topping and make pancake. So it's actually two in a one. So let's put it in the oven. Now you have some 12 minutes until you smell the beautiful aroma. So clean your kitchen, enjoy your free time, 12 minutes, yours. I will remind you. So in a pastry, it was eggs, butter, sugar, flour. Remember the mixing together? It's in the oven, one egg, done. Nice, beautiful, basic pastry. For the topping, we did the curd through the sieve. Then we have raisins soaked in the water, bit of sugar, bit of bit of flour and a couple of eggs and the topping is done. Now I will go take the pastry out, put the topping on, follow me. Nice, golden, aromatic, perfect, amazing. So the bottom is here and uh, here I have the topping. Let's taste it before we use it. Amazing. It's, you know how it tastes? It tastes like a, you know this Latvian stuff, we call it karuminch, this breakfast cheese. Really, really similar. So, this is still hot. We put it on, just simply put it on. I have a two spoons now. One is the old school wooden one. Start to use silicone. Why silicone? Because I can remove all the topping from the bowl. With the old school wooden one, it's impossible. Yes, you just cover it, easy peasy. Couple of steps, just equally, let it bake equally. Couple of moves, 
beautiful a lot of raisins. And we put it in the oven for some 12, 20 minutes. Let it bake and become golden again. And then it's the next trick is just to remove it from the oven and don't eat it. Leave it, let it cool down because it's impossible to even eat it super hot. You have to just be patient a bit. And now it's ready to go back to oven. Nice. Back to oven. The cake is in the oven, amazing. It smells already beautiful. Hope you can follow all the steps. If not, if I'm too fast, it's recorded, so you can just follow on a recording. The cake is ready. Actually, cool it down a bit. Let's see. Yep. Traditionally, it's actually not the round one, it's squared. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to do a bit more fancy one. So let's check it. Yep, everything is baked perfectly. And now the cut. So guys, how do you like? Perfect, right in. Curd cheesecake, PSP and Maize. You can serve it without anything, or you can serve it with nice strawberry jam, chocolate sauce. I prefer actually just simple like that. Good enough. It's always the same. Just good. So guys, thank you for watching. What you did was amazing. If you did it, just you know, I will take my hat off. So it's a perfect, amazing, classic porcini mushroom soup. Then we did a bit crazy dish, which tastes amazing as well. It's a pasta with Baltic herring, smoked one, and then we did perfect cottage cheese pie with the raisins. So three classical dishes from the Latvia. Enjoy and remember, dill is the god.